Hey YouTube, today we're going to be comparing a couple of Smith & Wesson 586s and these are both chambered in 357 Magnum and on the top here we have a Smith & Wesson 586 no dash and on the bottom here we have a Smith & Wesson 586 dash 4 and what I'm going to do is try and point out a couple of the little subtle differences in the two and some of the similarities in them. And before we go any further, I'm going to show you that these 357 Magnum Smith & Wessons, they don't have any ammo in them, and we are clear to make this video. So what we have here is a Smith & Wesson 586 No Dash. Now the 586 was the carbon steel blued version of the 686. 686 was in stainless and this was an answer to the famous Colt Python. They put a full underlug on them, had a, bit, a little bit larger frame than the Model 19 or the Model 66 in stainless and had target sights on it, um, target hammer, large spurred hammer on them and wide grip or wide trigger shoe on it. Now this one is a no dash and this one was um, a, like a first year production one and it's in excellent condition. Any imperfections you see on these two guns are going to be the oils from the storing them. And <clears throat> I'm going to show you some of the subtle differences I see here. Now I'm not a Smith & Wesson expert on this one and the one in the 4 inch configuration. So we'll look real close at the roll marks here. It says Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum. Right here, it just has where it's made, Smith & Wesson. And on this side, we have the Smith & Wesson logo here. And then on this side, it says Smith & Wesson on the barrel. And on the inside, as you can see, it just says Model 586. I can't get this thing to focus real well for you. And the serial number. And the action on this thing is real smooth. This one actually had an action job done on it. So this one's gonna have a little bit better action job than the other one. But the main difference you see right off the bat is these wood stocks. These are the Smith & Wesson Target wood stocks, and they are awesome looking. I mean, they make this gun look absolutely fantastic. But back in these days, Smith & Wesson had a really, really nice bluing on it. As you can see, the shine on this finish is absolutely amazing. Blue guns always do look amazing to me. They're just um, a real nice finish that they put on these things. I think the newer ones here today, they don't, they don't do, they don't take quite as much time and pay attention to detail that they did back in the older days. The target sights on them, they're adjustable for windage and elevation. And on this one, it's just a black square notch. And on the front, you have a red ramp. So it has a pretty nice sight picture on it. The hammer and the trigger are both color case hardened and this one has the firing pin mounted on the actual hammer that's one of the things that smith and wesson people look for these people that collect these things and never shoot them and stuff like that they have to have the firing pin on the hammer i've never understood that but who knows folks all the parts are actually um, forged on the inside there. there's no mem parts on this one this being an older one now the one we're going to compare it to is this is a smith and wesson 586 and this is a dash four i don't know if that'll pick up on camera or not but this is a dash four and this one was made around 1993 so this one is about 13 years newer than the one i just showed you but some of the differences, people get turned off on the higher dash ones. And I understand that if you get one of the newer ones that still has the lock on the internal lock system. It's got that ugly hole in the side of it. Bothers a lot of people. And the only thing that bothers me is I knew why they did it. It was a Smith & Wesson thing. They made a deal with the Clinton administration. And it does seem to affect the action on it. It doesn't work quite as smooth. But some of the other differences is every time Smith & Wesson made a change in production, after the model number, they put a dash and put a number. So this would be the fourth change. And I do not know all the changes that they made. I'm not a Smith & Wesson expert, but I can show you some of them. On this one, they changed the sight just a little bit. So this one has like a white outline on it instead of just being a black U-notch. And I think that's an improvement. Still has the 
red ramp on the outside. The injector is just a little bit different looking. If you look at these little um, these little notches here, the way they're shaped as compared to the no dash, it's a little bit different. These are all straight. So that would be one other little difference. The obvious difference is this is the first year they started going to the rubber grip. So you can see they're starting to cheapen stuff up a little bit. And they put rubber grips on them as opposed to these awesome looking wood walnut stocks that they put on the older ones. But other than that, I really don't see much difference in them. The sight's a little different. I think there's something different about this crane or something like that. I've read up on it, but I don't know what that is. But the bluing is equally as nice as the um, older one. Even 13 years later, they were still bluing these things very nice. And if you see any imperfections on these folks, both these guns are in pretty much perfect condition. I keep them really nice and all that. There's just fingerprints and oil and all that on them. I'm not a glove-wearing guy, and I'm never going to be a glove-wearing guy. But these, um, they're pretty much identical. They still have the color case hardened. Um, hammer and color case card and trigger all the parts are still fours there's no men parts on them i think the dash five is when they started doing some of the parts and mem which there's nothing wrong with men parts folks the problem with the newer revolvers is not the the actual firing pin being on the um hammer and it's not the men parts it's just the action doesn't work as good because of that internal lock and they really didn't pay as much attention to detail but all the markings on this one are exactly the same as you can see and um <clears throat> pretty much no difference just subtle changes they did with up until the dash four i believe and this is my opinion folks this is the last year to get a really nice 586 i believe after this they started going downhill and the only problem with this one like i said is the rubber grips and there's no there's no problem with holding it i mean it is super comfortable to hold these rubber grips i think they're made by the hogue but they actually have the smith and wesson insignia on it but i like these wooden grips better on this older one they just look a lot nicer and everything and i think i'm going to change at some point one day i'm going to put a find a set of nice wood grips to put on the four inch one but i think this was the last year to get really the last model change before you get a really nice one before they started cheapening stuff up and everything and the 586 was discontinued in 1999 they didn't make them anymore they continued to make the 686 and the stainless because this blue finish is really hard to do it's very labor intensive to polish these frames up and then apply this finish to it it's just very costly and they just discontinued them and then in I believe 2012 Smith and Wesson released their classic series and they came back out with the 586 and the 586 was always offered in nickel and blue and when they re-released it in 2012 the classic series which they still make today they only released the blue version and the blue version does not look quite as nice as as these older ones the finish doesn't look quite as nice the grips, they actually put wood grips on them, but they're like some kind of laminate kind. They don't look quite as nice as these, but I mean, I imagine they're still a good gun. I, don't, I can't talk too much about them because I've never owned one of the classic series Smith & Wesson's, but I've handled them and I've never fired one, but I have handled them. They do not work as well. Like you can tell the action isn't quite as tuned and all that, but the hammer does not have a firing pin mounted on it. It's a frame mounted fire pin as all new Smith & Wessons are. But anyway, folks, I wanted to show you these two side by side. They're about, you know, 13 years apart in production. One of them's a no dash on the top here and one of them's a dash four. And get your thoughts and see what y'all thought about these two side by side. But if you have any questions on either one of them, I have videos on each one of these um going into depth about them and feel free to reach out to me i'll answer them as best as i can anyway folks thank you very much for watching my video today and you folks have a great day